You're listening to Do That Well with your hosts, Brenda Brown and Karen Thrall, a podcast about real experiences and how to turn them into life lessons. Unscripted, honest, funny, genuine, and passionate, a series of conversations where we explore every aspect of human interaction and provoke each other to do life well. And today, Karen, you're taking the reins. I am taking the reins. <laughs> so it's Black History Month. Last week, you did your one of your inspirations. Yes. And uh, Andre Leon Tolley. And uh, today, I want to do one of my inspirations. And uh, her name is Viola Davis. She's an actor and producer. And the first time I saw her was on How to Get Away with Murder, which was a television series. And I loved her. I was like, who is this? And I knew of her, but she she won me over. And when I and so then I really start paying attention to her. So I'll watch any movie that she's in. So I have this thing where if you win my heart, you know, I don't care what the movie is, I'm going to watch it. <laughs> and so I have this big long list I, I'm checking off of movies that she's in. And and she's just quite an extraordinary woman. And so I thought we could talk about her. Um, she's a big, big, a big advocate for women of color and being uh, just being a forerunner. And she's very bold, unapologetic about it. And she's got, she's fiery and passion, feisty. So if you if you can, for people listening, to go on YouTube and just do one after another, you'll definitely get her vibe after a while. Of So I want to tell a little bit about her. And so before I do that, I, I mean, I'm assuming you're familiar with Viola Davis. I am, yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, okay. I, I know that, yes, she's an actress and producer. I did watch some of the How to Get Away with... I'm stumbling over my words. <laughs> How to Get Away with Murder. Yeah. Um, but I didn't watch all of it. Um, yeah. But I am familiar with some of her work. Yeah. She's just... It was fun watching her. Like, I just... Some of those scenes are so dramatic. And she did say... Um, that she, in that ep- that series specifically, she took some acting liberties uh, as an actor mm. uh, for some some of the dramatic moments. Um, and she's a huge advocate about not allowing Hollywood or media to find beauty and beauty and sexy. It, it's it's so unique to each person, and she's a big big advocate of that of you find your own sexy kind of thing. So I love that. I just find she's incredibly empowering. She's got, she wears her heart on her sleeve. You know, everything is with, you know, everything is just with emotion and joy and, and then sadness. And she's just really expressive, but incredibly eloquent, incredibly intelligent. So she waxes eloquence. She's known for her speeches. So so when, when she, every time she gives a speech, that's what she's become quite famous for as well. Okay. okay. So I'll give you a bit of a background. Uh, she's an American actress and producer. And this is the cool part. She's a recipient of an Academy Award, a Primetime Emmy Award, and two Tony Awards. So she wow. is the first, first African-American to achieve the Triple Crown of Acting. So she has a, isn't that the coolest? I get, gives me goosebumps. She has an Academy. She has an Emmy. She has a Tony, Oscar, Emmy, Tony. And she's the first, first African-American. And it's called the Triple Crown of Acting. That's huge. Huge. Because even having the Triple Crown of Acting, like regardless <laughs> of your, you know, skin color or gender exactly. is already a big deal. Yes. Like that's already a big feat. And I can think of numerous actors who do not have that under their belt. I know. And, and extraordinary actors. So then now you're going, okay, okay. You know, so if you're not people listening, if you're not familiar with her work, oh boy, like she's incredible in dramas and, um, and, and she, she just, she steps into the room. Like, there's sometimes she'll have these really small roles and she'll get accolades for them. And they're just like a moment, you know, she'll have like a five minute moment here, maybe a five minute moment at the end. And she gets accolades for that moment that she's on screen. She's got the, she's got it. Yeah. She has the it factor. She does. So some other fun information about her, she's time magazine named her one of the hundred most influential people in the world. That was 2012 and 2017. Uh, she received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2017. 
Uh, in 2020, the New York Times ranked her ninth in its list of the greatest actors of the 21st century up to that point. So, wow. yeah. She made the Times list twice? Yes. Yes. Impressive. Yeah. So she did graduate from Juilliard, um, and she won an Obie Award in 1999 for her performance as Ruby McCollum in Everybody's Ruby. So I'm not familiar with that award. Are you familiar I'm with not, that award? No. Okay. It sounds familiar, um, but not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she she was born in St. Matthews, South Carolina. She began her acting career in Central Falls, Rhode Island. And then um, she played minor roles in several films and et cetera. So that's, that is a part of her, her amazingness. And then, um, and then the movie list is, you know, I honestly, I would say watch it. Like if you're ever wondering what movie, just throw in Viola Davis and just pick one, you know, and, and because they're so, they really, they really draw you in. They really, she really draws you in. So, okay. Do you so have this, a favorite, Karen? I don't. Um, I be, and I would be, I would be the same for other actors. When I love the actor, I just love the actor. So I don't have okay. a favorite. Um <laughs> I just, man, they just, I, if I adore them, they do no wrong. Because <laughs> <I just laughs> if they can convince me and fool me, you know, remind me that I'm, it's, you know, that I'm, it's, they're playing a character and that I'm fooled by it. I'm like, I remember, totally side note, I remember I was not a fan of Sean Penn until I saw him in one movie and I didn't like him. I did not like him at all in this movie. And then I realized he got me. The guy got me. I don't like him. I don't like him. I don't like who he is. And it dawned on me. He was so good at acting that, and I, so I became a fan of Sean Penn because he fooled me, you know, he, he made me, Anthony Hopkins. Made believe, yeah. Yeah. Anthony Hopkins. I didn't like him. And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, he's really good. <laughs> so with Viola Davis, I always like her though. I just find her really extraordinary. Okay. So then I, I wanted to just, um, go down to this other section here. We're in her philanthropy and activism. I thought this is where we could spend some time yeah. today. And I've got tons of quotes. And I also thought we could, I could just go through some of her quotes and just get your feedback on what do you think and what does it pull out of you and stuff like that. Okay, so the first thing is um, she was really big in supporting her public library in Central Falls, Rhode Island uh, to prevent its closure. So that's that was 2011. Um, she donated funds to the, her alma mater, Central Falls High School, for its theater program. You know, she uh, collaborated with uh, campaign Hunger Is, and this is where I'm, I would like to share some of the stuff she says. So, t- she collaborated with Hunger Is to help eradicate childhood hunger across America. So she was speaking, and she said, "17 million kids in this country." So one in five kids in this country go to bed hungry. I was one of those kids because I grew up in in abject poverty. I did everything that you could possibly imagine to get food. I rummaged in the garbage cans. I stole from the local store constantly. And so that was her, that was her passion. She Mm -hmm. said as an honorary, um, and then it goes on as an honorary of 2014 variety power of women luncheon, Davis further commented that the thing that made me join was the word eradicate, get rid of, not by 30%, not by 20%, not by 50%, but to do away with it because everyone should be a child and should grow up and have a chance at the American dream. So that that's kind of you can see her. Wow. She's really takes she really becomes an advocate for for that. Um, and then her and her husband, he she adores him like, oh my gosh, like she just oodles love on him. She's mm-hmm. incredibly. I, I I listened to her say that she didn't call him back for six weeks. She was like, I don't know, he's too cute. <laughs> <laughs> So she didn't want to call him back because she was like, I don't know, he can't be a nice guy because he's too good looking. This is when they were first. Um, when he like first that. pursued her. Yeah. That's so funny. So, um, and then, um, and she's gotten tons of awards and recognitions and things like that. So that's a little bit of her life in a nutshell. And I guess um, in honoring her, she lives in the tension. Like, she's a voice to the voiceless. And I, I think for me, it actually makes me a little 
emotional a little bit. I don't have that thing. I don't know how to do that. Like, I, I don't know how to, like when she stands, she's compelling, you know, mm-hmm. and, and she's, she's, she doesn't mince her words and she throws a punch, but you know, it, it gets you and you're not expecting it. And I find in every speech, she just, you know, she just gets in there and she says, she says it like it is. And I so I'm inspired by that, that she's doing that and she's not forgetting where she came from. So mm-hmm. part of that tenacity is because she knows what it's like to be so impoverished that she had to dig through garbage cans to get food and steal food. Right. In she, this country. Her, her background. Mm. Uh, it seems like it very much so it informs the way that she lives her life now. Just based mm. off what you've told me just now. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I really like that she seems to have... Um, you know, it seems to be important to her to support where she came from. I think that's cool that she went back, that she has these initiatives to support, you mm-hmm. know, the library in the town that she is, was from and these things. It reminds me of Marshawn Lynch mm-hmm. because he's also a very big advocate for the community that he came from, mm-hmm. which I didn't actually realize until I moved here because I live in Oakland, which is where Marsh- mm-hmm. Marshawn Lynch is from. And, um, and I didn't realize how much he had put in the community until I moved here and, and learned more about it. But I think that, that particular aspect, I, I find very, um, admirable, I think, because Mm -hmm. I don't know, I, I look at my own childhood and I think about growing up and I grew up in a really small town. I didn't live in a big city or anything. And I think of all those times as a kid where I was just, you know, I didn't like where I grew up because I wanted to grow up in a city or I wanted there to be more exciting things happening. And at a certain point in my life, I started adopting this phrase, like everyone comes from somewhere. And that was sort of the way that I would make myself feel, you know, like, like it, that allowed me to slowly take ownership back over this place that is where I was raised, that I had these negative feelings about as a kid. And I don't know, I guess it just, this idea of like, we all come from somewhere and no matter where that is, it's just as important to be able to have these resources. And so I think it's really admirable when people that find success go back to their roots like that, Um, especially if it's from a place that isn't this big city or otherwise wouldn't have the same you know, support or uh, access to certain things that other talents. Yeah. And you, Brenda, like you, I want to pull up a quote from her. You have that advocacy. I find that you have that being a voice to the voiceless kind of thing, you know, like you, that your social justice, you know, the civil rights, all that stuff. I find that you, that's something that's important to you. You know what I mean? Yeah, I would say so. (laughs) Definitely. Yeah. And okay, so I want to ask a question about this. I want to just stay on this for a second. I just want to point up the quotes here. But it gets me. It it gets under my skin. And I don't know how. Like, look at me. This is silly. But I don't know how to do that. I want to do it, you know. So when I, it's hard when you're, sorry, whoa, okay, <laughs> clearly I'm pushing a button in myself. <laughs> um, but I think like just watching her, like I, I really, you know, I watched video after video and, and watching, I was like, Whew. and she, I, I hope I can find it. Um, here it is. And she goes, I don't have any time to stay up all night worrying about what someone who doesn't love me has to say about me. Mm-hmm. And and then another quote is, uh, you cannot live to please everyone else. You have to edify, educate, and fulfill your own dreams and destiny. And another one is, when your passion driver bigger than your fears, you just dive. And I, you know, and I could keep going. I mean, there's so many. I have like, so I, I want to just stay on this because we're talking about a living, she's becoming a living legend. She is. She's she's forerunning huge, just huge transformation. Mm -hmm. So I want to kind of volley it over to you. And I just want to hear you and 
when I talk like this and this whole thing of being a voice and all that, what does it do to you and what's your perspective? Well, just a moment ago, something you said uh, sparked another thought or, or I guess a statement that I had heard someone say recently. And it was this person on the internet. Um, I think it was on TikTok or something. But <laughs> anyhow, uh, they basically were more or less talking to uh, about how when you are a really public figure, you end up getting a lot of feedback, whether that be positive or negative from people and how there's this idea that at a certain point you have to remember like, yes, this feedback, whether it be negative or positive, like it does matter to me. But then remembering that you as an individual still get to decide how you want that to affect you and whether or not you care, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So there's a to get this difference between something mattering and then also caring about it. Does, does that make Keep sense? Point. Yeah, it does. Uh, and so when I think about what we're talking about, you know, this idea of like she seems to be very aware of how far her influence is reaching. I think so too. And, you know, it makes me think, that, and that's why I think of this, you know, um, because I would imagine that there's a lot of very positive feedback and things that people have to say, but there's probably some people that aren't necessarily caring as well. And that's where you get this idea of like, I can't go to bed worrying about this, or I can't spend my time worrying about these other things. So it's, it's like, it's not that I don't care that you think that, but, or it's, excuse me, it's not that I don't, uh, yeah, it's not that I don't care that you might have these negative things to say about me, but I can't let that affect me. Like I can't let those things be what's taking up my time. And so I like, where am I going with this? Good question. Uh, I like, <laughs> I, I think what I'm ultimately getting at is I'm liking in this messaging that I'm hearing from her that with this awareness of her influence, she seems to gently be saying in a very nice way, like, I don't have time for your hate. I don't have time for your negativity. Like, go ahead and say it, but I'm not going to engage with it. And I think to put that message out there in such a nice way is just very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's just, it's touching. It's big. It's like, it's showing. Cause I know Karen, you and I often talk about how we are people that choose to try and find silver lining we choose right. to try and find positivity yeah. we choose we choose it's a choice right to try and lead with kindness um not to say that we're always happy and everything <laughs> puppies and rainbows but yeah. this is a choice that we make in our lives and it seems like she has some really nice examples of how she's doing that same thing like, I really just like the way that she's tied that message up. in a Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and and there was another, I she said something where she went, I'm going to paraphrase because I don't have it. I saw it on YouTube. She said um, when she was younger, she couldn't see, she couldn't imagine that it would be even possible for her. Mm. She couldn't see it, couldn't see it in front of her. So she had to, the only thing she could hang on to is that she believed it. Mm -hmm. And so that being in that state, no, I, I know this is what I'm supposed to do. I can't see it. I don't see how it's even possible, but I know this is what I'm supposed to do. And she just, you know, and I think that, that, I think that breeds compassion in her or something possibly. Right. The other thing triggering what you said to the other thing she was talking about, when you said she says things kindly, gently, but she's also not going to care. I, mm -hmm. I I really like how you're saying that because she also several times in what I was reading on her, um, she makes she, she's she's in a movie with um, Meryl Streep, okay, and they it's I think it's Fences. I think it's the movie. Is it Fences or Doubt? 
No, it's doubt. Right? Ah. I don't know. Doubt. I think <laughs> yes, I think it's doubt. Fences is with uh, um, with Denzel Washington, which is incredible too. Um, but she she actually says people compare her to Meryl Streep as the black Meryl Streep. Hmm. And she's like, hmm. And so she talks really raw and open about every contract I have to fight tooth and nail. She goes, so you've got your greats. You've got your great actors. And then you have black women actors. And we have had to fight to get the same pay, to get to the same caliber. And so she's very strong on that. And mm -hmm. she really honors uh, the, the black actors that have gone before or that are still you know, they're leading the way and she thanks them as well for what they've had to go through to get to have the same honoring contract, you know? Mm -hmm. And so she's really, she feels like it's her job, I think, to educate everybody on, like she feels like I was saying earlier, even it's quite like, she's quite, whew, but she'll say things like black women, they, people don't want to see us as sexy, she was saying. Hmm. And she goes on about that. And she feels like she has to educate. Like It's because of the way it's been ingrained. Right. You know? And and so that even trying to break through that barrier. Right. Because there's a per perception of sexy. Like, it's, like, really fascinating. But she's so bold about it. And um, so, hmm. anyways. What that's... I like about what you're saying, too, is I'm getting this impression that um... – like there's no gatekeeping for lack of a better word. You know, I think sometimes when people work really, really hard to get to a certain place, it can yeah. be easy to develop this mindset of like, well, I worked really, really hard. So if you want to get here, like you need to work really, really hard too. And I am getting the impression that she doesn't necessarily have that mentality. Like she's like, I worked really, really hard but like, here's how you can try and get to where I am. And here's what I did. And like, it's more of this inspiration. It sounds like she wants to bring people along with her. She's trying to initiate like a culture shift versus staying within this old model where we get to a place, but then we're like, okay, you have to, you have to try hard. Cause I tried hard. Yeah. You know, I think that's kind of the, the norm. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I do think societally we are seeing, you know, in, in a, in a, bigger way we're starting to see people realize that that's maybe not the best way of operating right. and right. that supporting each other and trying to open mm. doors so that other people can follow you in the door is perhaps better mm. my mm. opinion of course um so i really i really like that it seems that this uh that seems to be something that she has in mind like she she's opened so. doors and she seems to want to bring people in the doors with yeah her. Like she, she's not I think closing so. the door behind, you know. No, I think so, and because she does, uh, my impression of her by listening, she, I don't, I can't remember if she actually said this. I don't think so, but don't compare yourself to her. Like, don't do that. Just you, every so she loves telling the stories. She has a famous quote as well about um, opportunity. The reason there's not more black women famous actors is we don't have the same opportunity so i basically screenwriters write stuff so that we can we can act in kind of thing you know hmm. so there's not enough material it's you know so i thought that was really interesting but i do think that she's not one like it's not about comparing it's about really understanding that yes inside you and you stay true to that and how you get there is going to be different. We're all different. And it's like what you just said earlier. Right. What was that phrase when you were growing up? There was a phrase. Or just you, that we all come from somewhere. We all come from somewhere, yeah. Okay, I wanted uh, another thing. Her and her husband start a production company. And uh, it's called uh, uh, Juvie Productions. And it's called, uh, and then the, the headline is Giving Voice. Um, and I just want to go here real quick and just tell you what it's about here. Um, uh, so a uh, Juvie Productions is an artist driven Los Angeles based production company that develops and produces independent film, television, theater, VR, and digital content across all spaces of narrative entertainment. Uh, 
Juve, J-U-V-E-E, Productions seeks to produce economical yet premium, sophisticated, and character-driven stories with an emphasis on producing narratives from a diverse range of emerging established voices alike. Juve Productions aims to uh, become the go-to creative hub where the next generation of filmmakers and artists have the space to craft dynamic stories spanning the broad spectrum of humanity. And then it goes on. And I think part of why they created this was to open the door, like you were saying. They're here they have these resources, they have this influence, and so they created this production company so that other people have an opportunity. And so they're paying it forward, you know. Yeah. And so you're right. Like there, there's a lot of that. Um, it's just so there we go. Um, I, don't, I have no idea how we're doing on time. We have four <laughs> minutes left. Really? <laughs> Perfect. Wow, my internal clock. So that's it. We only have 30 minutes. I hope, you know, the information I did share. And, I, and Viola Davis, I hope I represented you well. And forgive me if I didn't. <laughs> but um, I do love which, who she is. I love um, what she's doing. I love that she's a forerunner, forerunner. I think it's incredibly inspiring and it provokes me. And I, I, uh, I would love to learn a lot more from men and women like Viola Davis. So that's my, my <laughs> ending. Your end. No, thank you, Karen, for, cause I didn't know most of this. I mean, again, I just knew that she was an actor and a producer, but I, I didn't know about all of these different um, you know, endeavors that she was uh, affiliated with. And I didn't realize she had all these awards and things. So this is really informative to me. Um, my last like closing thought, I suppose, for today is it, this makes me think back to when we were having our conversation last week about um, Andre Leontali. And I think what seems to be a through line with these two individuals is that regardless of their race, their gender, any of that, you know, um, they really seem to, there seems to be this through line of them just being very influential, just humans, just individuals, right. That are out here doing all of these uh, or were in Andre Leon's case, mm -hmm. um, you know, just it, it, there's this, this confidence, like when you were talking about Viola earlier and you were saying how um, she has this ability to, to be a voice and to, you know, articulate herself well and have this presence. And that reminds me of when we were talking about Andre as well, that they just had, they, both these individuals seem to have this confidence about them. And it was, you know, a bit underspoken, I suppose, but it's just shown and heard and felt and seen through their actions and who they are as individuals. And mm -hmm. I think uh, just in general, when you come across individuals like that in, in your life, for me, it's like, okay, pay attention, pay attention to that person mm -hmm. because there's a reason you're being drawn to them. There's a confidence or something that you either want more of in your life or it needs to be strengthened in your own life or something. But for me, it's like when you find those individuals that have these admirable qualities and you get these big emotional reactions, like we're having, like pay attention to that, you yeah. know? And it's so true. What, what is, what do we need to learn? Exactly. Exactly. And also not to shy away, like not to, not to shy away from, from that energy. You right. Know? It's, it's really attractive. It's full of love. It's full of, and it's bold and it's wise and it's eloquent and it's intelligent, you know? And I, I find it's like, wow, like I, I'm inspired to, you're right. Like I'm inspired to want to grow that muscle. Like, I, like, I, like, what's my excuse, I guess? What's my excuse, you know? And uh, and that seems to be, you know, this is not the first time you and I have talked about this. <laughs> there is something that keeps niggling at me, you know, to, to explore this more. And so there we go. Maybe there's a, an episode in the future about it. Maybe there we'll is. <laughs> yeah, maybe there is. Well, All thank right. you. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Karen. And with that, this concludes our episodes specifically about Black History Month. But as we said in our very first episode about Black History Month this month, um, this kind of learning is for all year round. So 
I know that I am personally committing to continuing to inform myself about different people and learn more things. And I don't want this kind of learning to be something that we only do in the month of February. Yeah. So that is that. All right. Well, thank you all for listening. And we will be back next week with a new topic. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.